The 20-year-old uh, Thomas Crooks, who had uh, tried to assassinate former U.S. President Donald Trump, uh, made a series of stops to stock up on ammo before the attack, according to certain reports. Now, Thomas Matthew Crooks also practiced firing at a shooting range on Friday, a day before uh, the Trump rally. The next morning, Crooks went to the Home Depot to buy a five-foot ladder. He then bought 50 rounds of ammunition from a gun store, as per uh, uh, this is what reports are indicating. And we are also getting to know that uh, he used the same ladder to climb the building from where he opened fire at Trump. Arzu on the telecast with me. Arzu, um, uh, shocking details surfacing at this point of time. If you could take our viewers uh, through what exactly the reports are indicating. Uh, well, Thomas Matthew Crooks, a 20-year-old uh, who tried to assassinate former U.S. President Donald Trump at a campaign rally in Pennsylvania before the attempt, Crooks took several steps to prepare. This is what the report is saying. On the Friday before the rally, Crooks went to the shooting range to practice his aim because in the investigation also this has come. That the sources have told that he was very bad at shooting. So he, um, before the day, he went for a practice, uh, doing the shooting practice also. The next morning, he went to a home depot store and brought a five-foot ladder. Uh, after, uh, afterwards, he visited a gun store and brought 50 rounds of ammunition. Uh, on the day of the rally, Crooks used the ladder to climb onto a, a building near the rally site. Hmm. From this high vantage point, he opened fire on the 78-year-old former president. The injection shows that the crook had planned the attack carefully, taking time to practice shooting and gather the necessary supplies. So one by one, all these things have been coming up regarding the uh, assassination attempt that was made on the uh, former U.S. President. Yes, Sir All right, Arzu, stay on with us. In fact, uh, I'd like to rope in Mr. Sarjeev into the telecast. So, uh, you know, of course, there isn't... Uh, uh, the reason or the motive behind this attack has not been ascertained so far, but there is uh, uh, now a sort of a pre-picture uh, that is coming into uh, place. The fact that uh, uh, there are reports indicating that he had a plan of action to go buy ammo, to go buy a ladder. Uh, these are all uh, now reports that are surfacing. And in fact, the FBI also, uh, you know, of course, uh, uh, released, uh, uh, you know, made revelations. The fact that uh, his father had bought a gun six months uh, uh, before this incident and a lot more details have surfaced. How do you then view the situation as it's unfolding and uh, uh, should one perhaps blame uh, you know, the gun laws in the United States of America for, for, for sort of um, uh, pushing towards such an incident then taking place? Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, the short and clear and crisp answer to the second question of yours is that, that is the gun culture in the U.S. to blame for this? I would say absolutely it is. Okay, uh, but you know, there are too many wheels within wheels of that and that cannot be changed. Um, yeah, that seems impossible to change for many years. But who knows, Trump again, after this come to Buddha moment, he may decide, okay, whatever. Okay, but that won't happen. There are too many entrenched interests. Now, going back to this guy, uh, certainly, yes, uh, I mean, he had some motive which has not been found out. I think that's the first and most important thing. Everybody's trying to figure out hmm. what uh, made him do this, right? Hmm. There are, of course, conspiracy theories and other theories. Keep them aside. Let's say we assume for a moment that he acted alone. But even then, the question is, why did he act? Did he have a political or ideological, you know, uh, antipathy to Trump? And that's why he wanted to kill him? Or was there some personal reason due to which he had hatred for Trump? And there have been cases. Shimzo Abe was killed hmm. by an attacker whose mother had gone bankrupt donating to the church. And he blamed that church and the leadership of which Abe was a promoter. And therefore, Reagan was killed in uh, 19... Uh, not sorry. Sorry. Uh, uh, attempt was made yeah. right, by John Hinckley, this guy. Hmm. And hmm. he was insane. He attacked him so that he would be in the national news so that he would impress Jodie Foster, a very popular actor of that time, young, beautiful girl, Jodie Foster, to impress her. So who knows, there could be some such other dimension linked to because of which for Trump. So, so but that's a mystery which has to be you know, revealed. It must. But back to gun culture. Uh, gun culture, there are multiple aspects. See, gun culture is inherent to America and Americans, right from its founding. 
Okay, uh, those were days when the lands were vast, you were in isolated locations, America was a new world, people were coming to America, going to the West kind of a thing, creating their own homes, capturing land, whatever. So guns were needed for defense and offense, whatever. So America is steeped in that culture. And added to it is the argument of the right, those who want. One is like, okay, hunting. I love hunting. is a sport, right? And the other one, which is a deeper one again, is that there may be civil war in America any day. I need to defend my home. And the other one is that, you know, that the government and which, you know, Trump also says, the radical right says, is coming after you. These are communists. They'll come after my homes, my guns. So I need to have my own fortress. So these are few, you know, fundamental aspects. And on top of it is this is all laid in with definitely, you know, donor money, the lobbying money. And plus laws which have been changed over a period of time, you know, state laws, federal laws. So the mixture of the laws which is already there. Hmm. And so changing those is extremely difficult, right? Uh, and getting change done through the Congress is very, again, not possible. They have been, they've been school shootings and they've been calls and this to it, each one disaster after another, but nothing comes out of it. So unfortunately, unfortunately, it seems America has to live and manage this. Right, absolutely. Dr. Chirayu is still with us on the broadcast. Sir, um, you know, this boy was um, 20 years old, very, very young. Uh, one can perhaps argue that, uh, that, you know, he had an impressionable mind. Um, do you think there was then a straightforward reason for him to orchestrate this attack or do you think there's something more twisted? Uh, well, still the probe is going on. We don't know much detail. We don't even know uh, uh, what were the motives. Like if he were to be a, like a member of Antifa or a far left group, we could immediately impute a motive. But what is happening in this case is this guy uh, looked very perplexed even politically because he was a registered uh, Republican but hmm. was donating to Democrats. Uh, he did not like Trump but he liked some of the Democrat policies but still uh, was with the Republican Party. So it doesn't make any sense at this moment based on his uh, exterior political leanings. Now, it could be uh, his mental issues, his personal issues, as some of the examples were recently pointed. So uh, I think we don't have much clarity uh, yeah. at, at this stage, and the probe is still going on. And uh, because anything that uh, it uh, they reveal at this early stage while the RNC is still going on may become a political football. So even the FBI, I'm, I'm assuming, would take its time to reveal the information bit in bits and pieces. But having said that, uh, the point that I would like to raise is when, you know, there is already this hyper polarized polity and when you uh, just uh, make the politics, bring it to existential level, uh, portray your enemy in very existential terms, uh, not enemy, but uh, your uh, political adversary in very existential term. Uh, their success is defined in normalizing and moralizing term that if they come, the democracy would end, uh, uh, you know, uh, they would take your life or uh, they are coming after your kids or your ability to get on abortion, so on and so forth. When it is this extreme level when uh, politics and personal life get intertwined when things become this polarized i think uh, this is a natural outgrowth of that sort of uh, politics that is currently being played out in the us and uh, if united states wants to prevent a civil war of its own i think it's uh, incumbent upon both sides to tone down a little bit to bring down the temperature to uh, be a little bit unifying and it starts with top down uh, and I think it is time uh, for both sides to do that otherwise we'll see worse uh, coming from both ends. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.